Medieval French literature is, for the purpose of this article, literature written in oil languages during the period from the 11th century to the end of the 15th century. The material and cultural conditions in France and associated territories around the year 1100 unleashed what the scholar Charles Homer Haskins termed the Renaissance of the 12th century, and, for over the next hundred years, writers, junglers, clerks, and poets produce a profusion of remarkable creative works in all genres. Although the dynastic struggles of the Hundred Years' War and the Black Death pandemic of the 14th century in many ways curtailed this creative production, the 15th century laid the groundwork for the French Renaissance. For historical background go to History of France, France in the Middle Ages or Middle Ages for other national literary traditions. Go to medieval literature language, up to roughly 1340. The Romance languages spoken in the Middle Ages in the northern half of what is today France are collectively known as Ancient Francais, or Langs, D-O-I-L, following the Germanic invasions of France in the 5th century. These northern dialects had developed distinctly different phonetic and syntactical structures from the languages spoken in southern France. The languages in southern France are collectively known as Langs d'O.C. or the Occitan language family, of which the largest group is the Provençal language. The western peninsula of Brittany spoke Breton, a Celtic language. Catalan was spoken in the south, and Germanic languages and Franco-Provençal were spoken in the east. The various dialects of Old French developed into what are recognized as regional languages today. Languages which developed from dialects of Old French include Bourguignon, Champenois, Franc Comtois, Francian, Gallio, Lorraine, Norman, Anglo Norman, Picard, Poitevin, Saint Ongez, and Walloon. From 1340 to the beginning of the 17th century, a generalized French language became clearly distinguished from the other competing oil languages. This is referred to as Middle French. The vast majority of literary production in Old French is in verse. The development of prose as a literary form was a late phenomenon. The French language does not have a significant stress accent or long and short syllables. This means that the French metric line is not determined by the number of beats, but by the number of syllables. The most common metric lengths are the 10-syllable line, the 8-syllable line and the 12-syllable line. Verses could be combined in a variety of ways. Blocks of assonance lines are called laces. Another frequent form is the rhymed couplet. The choice of verse form was generally dictated by the genre. The Old French epics are generally written in ten-syllable assonance laces, while the chivalric romance was usually written in octosyllabic rhymed couplets. Early texts The earliest extant French literary texts date from the 9th century, but very few texts before the 11th century have survived. The first literary works written in Old French were Saints' Lives. The Canticle of St. Eulalie, written in the second half of the 9th century, is generally accepted as the first such text. It is a short poem that recounts the martyrdom of a young girl. St. Alexis fled from his family's home in Rome on his wedding night and dwelled as a hermit in Syria until a mystical voice began telling people of his holiness. In order to avoid the earthly honor that came with such fame, he left Syria and was driven back to Rome, where he lived as a beggar at his family's house, unrecognized by all until his death. He was only identified later when the Pope read his name in a letter held in the dead saint's hand. Although the saint left his family in order to devote his life more fully to God, the poem makes clear that his father, mother, and wife are saved by the Alexis intercession and join him in paradise. The earliest and best surviving text is in St. Albans Psalter, written probably at St. Albans, England, in the second or third decade of the 12th century. This provenance is indicative of the fact that many of the most important early texts were composed in Anglo-Norman dialect. 
the Chanson de Gesta. At the beginning of the 13th century, Jean Baudel, in his Chanson de Cisnes, divided medieval French narrative literature into three subject areas, the matter of France or matter of Charlemagne, the matter of Rome, romances in an ancient setting, the matter of Britain, Arthurian romances, Breton lay. The first of these is the subject area of the chansons de gesta deeds, epic poems typically composed in ten-syllable assonance laces. More than 100 chansons de gesta have survived in around 300 manuscripts. The chief theme of the earliest French epics was the court of Charlemagne, Charles Martel and Charles the Bald and their wars against the Moors and Saracens, or disputes between kings and their rebellious vassals. The oldest and most celebrated of the chansons de gesta is the Song of Roland, seen by some as the national epic of France. It is perhaps no coincidence that the Song of Roland was first written down at a date very close to that of Pope Urban's call for the First Crusade. Its plot may be seen as a glorification of the Crusader ethos. The earliest chansons de gesta are anonymous. They are popular literature. They use an assortment of stock characters. The valiant hero, the brave traitor, the shifty or cowardly traitor, the Saracen, the giant, and so forth. But they also reveal much of the fears and conflicts that were part of the audience's experience. Kings are vain, foolish, old or wily. Insults that threaten honor or cause shame are seen to provoke bloody conflict which may arise simply from competitiveness among knights or noble families. For discussion of the much-debated origins of this epic genre, see Chanson de Gesta. Approximately 100 chansons survive in manuscripts that date from the 12th to the 15th century. Not long after Jean Baudel, Bertrand de Barcioroba in his Gerard de Vienne set out a grouping of the chansons de Gesta into three cycles each named after a chief character or ancestral figure, and each with a central theme, such as loyalty to a feudal chief, or the defense of Christianity. This is a list of the cycles with a few of the chansons that belong to each. The Gesta du Roi. In these the chief character was Charlemagne or his heirs, and a pervasive theme was his role as the divine champion of Christianity. This cycle contains the earliest and best known of the epics, the Song of Roland Fiera Brass Asperamont Huon de Bordeaux Chanson de Cisnes by Jean Baudel, the guest of the Garand de Montglaine, whose central character was William of Orange. These dealt with knights who were typically younger sons without an inheritance who sought land and glory through combat with the Saracens. Chanson de Guillaume Couronnement de Louis Charward and Nîmes Prize de Range à la Scanzimerie de Narbonne and Gerard de Vienne by Bertrand de Barcioroba. The Gesta de Dune de Mayence, this cycle was concerned with rebels against royal authority and its most famous characters were Renaud de Montalban and Gerard de Roussillon. Gourmand de Isimbart Gerard de Roussillon Renaud de Montalban or Les Catra Phil Simon Raoul de Cambrai d'une de Mayence. A fourth grouping, not listed by Bertrand, is the Crusade Cycle, dealing with the First Crusade and its immediate aftermath, and including Chanson d'Antioche Les Che Acute Tifs. New chansons tended to be produced and incorporated into the existing literature in two ways. A separate period or adventure in the life of an established hero was told. The adventures of one of the ancestors or descendants of an established hero was told. This method of epic expansion, with its obsession with bloodline, was to be an important compositional technique throughout the Middle Ages. It also underscores the symbolic weight placed within this culture on family honor, paternal fidelity and on the idea of proving one's filial worth. As the genre matured, it began to borrow elements from the French Roman and the role of love became increasingly important. In some chansons de gesta an element of self-parody appears, as in the Pelerinage de Charlemagne. The Roman, Jean Baudel's other two categories, the matter of Rome and the matter of Britain, concern the French romance or Roman. The term Roman signifies, roughly, vernacular. 
but it is used to designate narrative poetry usually written in octosyllabic rhymed couplets and telling stories of chivalry in love. The most famous Romans are those of the matter of Britain, dealing with Arthurian romance, the stories of Tristan and Isildur, the heroic legend of the doomed utopia of Camelot and the Holy Grail. Much of this material derives from Breton legends. The most important of these writers was Cratian de Troyes. The Matter of Rome concerns romances that take place in the ancient world, such as romances dealing with Alexander the Great, Troy, the Aeneid and Oedipus. Yet Bodil's category leaves little place for another important group of romances. Those adventurous romances which are often set in Byzantium. Around a hundred verse romances survive from the period 1150 to 1220. From around 1200 on, the tendency was increasingly to write the romances in prose. Although new verse romances continued to be written to the end of the 14th century, and it was chiefly in the prose form that many romances were read from the 14th to the 16th century. The success of the early Arthurian romances also led, from around 1200 on, to a restructuring and compiling of the material into vast prose cycles. Important Matter of Rome Romances of the 12th century Roman de Thebes, Roman de Eni Acutes, Roman de Troyes, Benoit de saint Maury. Roman d'Alexander, this romance uses a twelfth-syllable verse and is the reason why this verse length is termed Alexandrine. Important Byzantine and adventure romances of the 12th century Flor and Blanchefler, Florimond, Aemon de Verena, Guillaume d'Angleterre, sometimes ascribed to Cratian de Troyes. Robert Le Diable, Important Romances of Britain of the 12th and 13th Centuries Brute, Wace, Erec and Anaid, Cratian de Troyes, Cledges, Cratian de Troyes, Lancelot, or Lancelot, The Knight of the Cart, Cratian de Troyes, Evane, The Knight of the Lion, Cratian de Troyes, Perceval or The Story of the Grail, Cratian de Troyes, Romance of the Grail, Robert de Baron, Tristan, Thomas of Britain, Tristan, Beryl, Roman de Fergus, William the Clark, Important Romances of the 13th and 14th Centuries, Chastelaine de Vergy, The Lancelot Grail, or Vulgate Cycle, and its sections, a prose reworking of the Lancelot and Grail stories. The Post-Vulgate Cycle, another prose reworking of the Lancelot and Grail stories, Percy Forrest, Gui de Warwick, Roman de la Rose, Guillaume de Loris and Jean de Man. The most important romance of the 13th century is the Romance of the Rose which breaks considerably from the conventions of the chivalric adventure, story. In a dream a lover comes upon a garden and meets various allegorical figures. The second part of the work expands on the initial material with scientific and mythological discussions. The novel would have an enormous impact on French literature up to the Renaissance. Related to the previous romance is the medieval narrative poem called Dite, which follows the poetic form of the Roman. These first-person narrative works often use allegorical dreams, allegorical characters and the situation of the narrator lover attempting to return toward or satisfy his lady. The 14th century poet Guillaume de Macout is the most famous writer of dits. Another notable author of dits is Gautier Lalaeu. King René I of Naples is allegorical romance Gur de Morepres is also a work in the same tradition. Lyric Poetry Medieval French lyric poetry was indebted to the poetic and cultural traditions in southern France and Provence, including Toulouse, Poitiers, and the Aquitaine region, where Languedoc was spoken. In their turn, the Provençal poets were greatly influenced by poetic traditions from the Hispano Arab world. The Occitan or Provençal poets were called troubadours, from the word troubar. Lyric poets in Old French are called trouvers, using the Old French version of the word. The Occitan troubadours were amazingly creative in the development of verse forms and poetic genres. 
but their greatest impact on medieval literature was perhaps in their elaboration of complex code of love and service called Fin Amours, or, more generally, courtly love. The Fin Amours tradition appears at roughly the same time in Europe as the cult of the Virgin Mary, and the two have obvious similarities. In the Fin Amours tradition, the poet pledges his service to his lady, in much the same way a knight or vassal pledges service to his lord. In the poems of the troubadours, the lady is frequently cold, distant, or upset with the poet and demands that he prove his service to her, the poet for his part, is generally tormented by his passion, and his poems are often desperate pleas to his lady so that she might grant him some favor. For more information on the troubadour tradition, see Provençal literature, selected Truvere poets of the 12th and 13th centuries. Conan de Bethune, Le Chatelaine de Cauchy, Blondel de Nesla, Richard de Lionheart, Gassa Brule, Colin Musette, Theobald IV of Champagne, Adam de la Halle, Guillaume de Provence. By the late 13th century, the poetic tradition in France had begun to develop in ways that differed significantly from the troubadour poets, both in content and in the use of certain fixed forms. The new poetic tendencies are apparent in the Roman de Forval in 1310 and 1314, a satire on abuses in the medieval church filled with medieval motets, lay, rondo and other new secular forms of poetry and music. The best-known poet and composer of Ars Nova Secular Music and Chansons was Guillaume de Macaut. Selected French poets from the late 13th to the 15th centuries Rutebuf, Guillaume de Macaut, Eustache de Champ, Alain Chartier, Christine de Pissan, Charles Duc de Layens, François Villon. The last three poets on this list deserve further comment. Charles Duc de Layens was a noble and head of one of the most powerful families in France during the Hundred Years' War. Captured in the Battle of Agincourt, he was a prisoner of the English from 1415 to 1441 and his balladesh often speak of loss and isolation. His son became King Louis XII of France. Christine de Pissan was one of the most prolific writers of her age. Her Cité des Dames is considered a kind of feminist manifesto. François Villon was a student and vagabond whose two poetic testaments, or wills, are celebrated for their portrayal of the urban and university environment of Paris and their scabrous wit, satire and verbal puns. The image of Villon as vagabond poet seems to have gained almost mythic status in the 16th century, and this figure would be championed by poetic rebels of the 19th century and 20th centuries. Poetic forms used by medieval French poets include ballad, rondeau, dittier, dits morrow, lie, violi, pastoral, complainter, chanson, chanson de toile, chanson de croissade, chanson courtoise, rotroinger, chant royal, ober, jupartie.